dear uh, pure urology viewers good evening one and all uh, today is actually a special day for us uh, because we started during corona period this uh, program of online uh, education about the urology surgical techniques uh, at that time enthusiasm was there and we have done almost sometimes daily basis and we are continuing over a period of two years and the first program has been done by dr ravindra sabni sir from nadiad mpuh and this is 200 uh, i mean 226th program after uh, two years so same day march 24th uh, 2021 we started this pure urology uh, we have maintained almost the primary principle of surgical technique discussion and we continued that various speakers across the world have spoken and uh, today we have chosen the topic uh, of uh, a prone PCNL. As you all know, uh, prone PCNL is the gold standard and 90-95% uh, of the population across the world urologists will do prone PCNL without any problem. Only recently the supine PCNL has come after RIRS and ECRS has come. So prone PCNL is practiced by many urologists, many of the teachers know it. That's why we thought uh, uh, in theater, we made a dialogue type of discussion where uh, prevention of complications and uh, how to get uh, away from the problems. This is a not uh, any PowerPoint presentation. I am also not showing any PowerPoint presentation. Sabni sir also is not showing any PowerPoint presentation. So we will only uh, discuss. Uh, I have kept in a theater mode with a cell phone. So we will discuss about uh, supracostal puncture, lateral punctures, colon, uh, all this uh, practically. Uh, if you ask the questions, it makes a lot of difference because every time I am asking, it will be uh, narrow. Uh, only my mind will be thinking. So we will immediately take up your questions, predominantly today, question answer based because sir is experienced uh, in uh, PCNL with uh, not only uh, theory, but also practicals conducting so many live workshops he might have faced all these problems so that he can answer immediately. Uh, Sabni sir, thank you very much for joining and uh, your blessings made us to travel this long journey and appreciated by many people, sir. Thank you, sir. No, thank you very much. From my side, hearty congratulations for uh, uh, continuing and pursuing this uh, educational activity. I, I know there are many uh, people who start uh, so many things with a very good objective, very good idea. They make a very good start. But over a period of time, the enthusiasm fizzles out and the, uh, the, the, uh, the activities uh, go down. But I must congratulate you that uh, you have persisted with that activity. And uh, as I can see and I can view so many activities and so many uh, programs, so many viewers who have seen this program, who have been benefited and the number may be in several lakhs of people collectively put together. So that's, I think, a huge contribution to the field of urology. And I must congratulate you. I feel personally very much privileged that um, the first program when you started, I was the person who was there. Yes, uh, the one year when you completed, I was there. And now it is two years completed, I was there. So I think especially, I feel specially privileged yes, that you have given, uh, given that to me. And I really feel obliged. So thank you very much for inviting me. And whatever questions and whatever thing is there, I am ready to answer that. Thank you very much. Once again, uh, without wasting time, with uh, one and a half minute with your permission, I am playing this one and a half minute video. Uh, sure. We made for the uh, occasional video quality.
So thank you uh, all the speakers who have contributed for this. And thank you uh, the, uh, the face, uh, Facebook uh, members who have continuously discussed and uh, made it uh, successful. Today, a talk is how to do prone PCRL safely by Dr. Ravindra Sabnis, sir. He is the immediate past president of Urology Society of India. Past position held in urological societies are many. Treasurer, Urological Society, Mumbai. Council member, West Zone, USA. Council member, Urological Society of India. Honorary Secretary, West Zone, USA. President, West Zone, USA. Council member, Board of Education, USA. Chairman, Board of Education, USA. Honorary Secretary, USA. He is a reviewer for Journal of Urology, Journal of Endourology, British Journal of Urology, World Journal of Urology, IJU, and Journal of Andrology. He has written book, Urology Instruments, Comprehensive Guide, more than 200 presentations in various journal, national, inter -journal, international conferences, more than 50 guest lectures, orations in various journal, national conferences, faculty at various state, journal, national, international conferences, demonstrated surgeries in various live operative workshops at state, journal, national conferences, Operative faculty at various conferences, workshops abroad, Qatar, Dhaka, Manila, and Nepal. Uh, to be uh, precise and uh, not to exaggerate, uh, I must share my uh, half minute of experience. In our SOGAS conference, when I was doing ectopic kidney RIRS, he was behind me and a lot of seniors were there. It was a difficult case, large stone impacted in the pelvis in ectopic kidney. I was doing slowly, then he appreciated. And all this uh, RIRS learning, I went to Nadiad in 2007, 8, 9, comes to every three months. Dr. Oliver Traxer, Dr. Grasso, sir, all used to come there and demonstrate. That's where I learned. After that, in 2017, in the same hospital, I was being invited as the faculty along with Oliver Traxer, sir. That is the encouragement given to the juniors by Sabni, sir. Everybody knows I need not mention. With this, we will start the presentation. Sir, with your permission, I have, I have gone to the theater module here. Yes, please. I will use the pen and this thing. I have okay. made one of my technician who accepted for the lying down. So we will start the questioning, sir. Okay, okay. It will be uh, like around 20 questions, finishing within 40 no to 50 minutes. No Thank problem. you, sir. I will go to the cell phone mode. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sir. Yes, yes, I can see. I can see. I'm not able to listen. Hello, Sabni, sir. Yes, tell me. Yes, sir, I am able to listen, sir. Sir, uh, the first question I wanted to ask a uh, lot right. of there that if somebody lies in prone certain uh, certain uh, uh, nerves or the eye can be damaged is it really true or if you take what precautions uh, to prevent this complication for example he is lying down he does he, he has hands here like this uh, in in theoretically if you pad properly do this complication occur if you do for a long time in prone surgery sir no, it is, uh, if you take all precautions, nothing is going to happen because uh, I'm sure there are lakhs and lakhs of uh, prone PCNS are done. But certainly, if you don't take the precautions and especially uh, if you do under general anesthesia, then Sir. certain precautions have to be taken. There is no question about it. Appropriate padding is very much necessary. Even for the, your uh, knee joint and your uh, foot, they have to be properly protected. Your hand should not fall down because all these awkward angles and awkward uh, positions eventually can have neuropraxia. It may not be completely now damaged, but certainly it can have neuropraxia and that can be really disturbing uh, to the patient. Okay. So certainly prone position is not with uh, the, the zero hazards. There are hazards, but certainly all those now are very standardized. And anesthesia team also become expert over a period of time. Any and the should be taken. For two hours. Yes, there is no problem. No problem. In fact, no in problem fact uh, the irony is that we always thought that in a prone position, the chest capacity is hampered, your oxygenation is uh, uh, poor. But in fact, in the COVID time, it was reversed. People who had uh, reduced oxygenation, they had reduced capacity. 
they advise all the time people to sleep in prone position and yes. they found that uh, they recovered very well so yes, what we were understanding about prone is uh, completely changing yes sir sir second question in relation to the position lot of people say that if you don't uh, uh, if you put any bolster or don't put anything below the abdomen actually people like to put below the chest below the uh, below the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the hip joint Right. Then it becomes free. There right. is argument that if it is become free, kidney will be going down and moving more, and so you cannot stabilize with the needle. Right. But other way around, if you put bolster, this part will be fixed, and it may be difficult to respiration also, and this column may come slightly uh, posterior. They say. Uh, right. What is your uh, general? For example, if the patient is not obese, right, uh, right, right. What is the position you recommend? to right. avoid the colon and to avoid movements uh, unnecessarily and at the same time anesthetist will be comfortable right Generally, i think you are you are absolutely right this question and this doubt exists in almost everybody's mind yes, and sir. wherever we go uh, people keep asking this question and uh, i think that needs little bit of a clarity first and foremost is that if you keep the abdomen like this without mm -hmm. any bolster or anything what you have shown here yes, the sir. abdomen gets pressed Now yes. what happens is that in the body there is a white line and the peritoneal reflection is on the white line. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you press the abdomen, yes. the white line is not going to change. It is fixed in the body. Okay, but sir. but what will happen is that because there is a pressure in the abdomen, the abdominal contents get flattened out and they bulge uh, on the on the lateral side. Yes. Yes, sir. So so they will keep bulging above the lateral uh, the uh, the white line inside what we see when the laparoscopy we do that white line it keeps bulging. So yes, what sir. happens is that if your puncture is uh, too lateral, then uh, the bulged uh, peritoneal cavity and contents uh, may may create some problem. Okay. So that is first and foremost thing. Secondly, if you if you keep the uh, two bolster, one under the chest and one under the uh, under the uh, under the buttocks, yeah. if you keep that way, then abdominal contents actually go down. Yes, Now, sir. kidney will also go down is wrong simply because the kidney's fixed structure in the retroperitoneal. Kidney oh. is covered with fascia. There is a gerotas fascia. There is a retroperitoneal structure, and by changing the position, you are not going to change the kidney position. so okay. kidney position is going to remain same but abdominal contents actually uh, go down that keeps hanging and therefore your white line and everything becomes clear and even if your puncture is a little bit lateral or something uh, you, there is no hazard of damaging anything that is one secondly okay. secondly about the uh, hampering the chest movement and causing a problem in the anesthesia so if you keep a bolster under the chest it should not be too much under the chest it should be just a uh, lower part of the chest upper part of the chest remains uh, free yeah and, and then what happens is that if you keep this position under spinal anesthesia keep this bolsters then for the patient to remain in that position because upper part of the body is not anesthetized then yes. it becomes very uncomfortable to the patient and after some time patient uh, start moving his upper upper body because he gets pain and he gets discomfort in the upper part of the body and therefore that is a little uncomfortable when you give ga and put a bolster there there are two types one is the uh, patient is breathing of his own and there is a the, there is a, a controlled respiration if yeah. there is controlled respiration wherever you put a bolster and is it is immaterial because it is going to the chest is going to expand with the uh, with the ventilator there is a controlled anesthesia but yes. if the uh, if the anesthesia is given in such a way that it is not a controlled respiration then yes. you have to see whether the respiratory movements are proper and whether oxygen is remaining proper or not if that is not so then you have to change the anesthesia to a controlled respiration take them into deep anesthesia and control it yes otherwise bolster like this is not going to cause any problem okay sir sir normally all the seniors uh, this is a topic related to prevent complications that's why i right. am Right. Correct, correct, correct. Or I have seen any patient, sir, or you may be, especially my patient, sir, and some of the senior, they mark uh, fixed landmarks like yes. this lifting, this is iliac crest, and correct. they mark uh, the uh, rib uh, uh, like this. Yes. And 
uh, then they mark this and uh, they mark the lateral spine. Do Correct. you think that if all the juniors if practice, it decreases the complications of injuring something? Yes. Else in, anatomy, yes. in surface anatomy, if you know, uh, and this is exposed during surgery, all this. Correct. Correct, uh, correct, correct. Better, sir? Yeah, so this marking is important, uh, especially in the initial part of your uh, PCNL practice, because you want to have less complication uh, as possible. See, one thing is certain that we have to accept the fact that PCNL is invented uh, almost 40 years back now. There are four decades are over. And still, if you see the uh, Western world, European world, and all those people, they are moving away from uh, PCNL simply because there is a potentiality and fear of complication. Yes, otherwise, sir. otherwise, uh, PCNL procedure as such, there is an undisputed uh, uh, unanimity that the procedure is far better than um, the RIRS or any other thing. But yes, when it comes to complication, it outweighs the RIRS and therefore RIRS is taken over the PCNL. Yes, and therefore. The biggest challenge and biggest problem of PCNL is the potentiality and fear of complications. Now, yes, as you stated that this particular talk and dialogue is to reduce the complication and yes, therefore sir. all these points have to be discussed. If yes, you are in the initial practice of uh, PCNL, it is better to land, have the landmark. Where right. is the 11th rib? Where is the 12th rib? Where is the pararectal muscle? Where is the inferior uh, iliac crest margin? Where is the posterior axillary line? Because these are the landmarks which will give you the idea where exactly you are making a puncture, where exactly you are uh, in relation with the rib, where exactly you, you are in relation with all other structures. And that yeah. eventually will reduce the complications. Yeah. Uh, coming to the puncture, sir, personally, when you do, I have seen you follow the triangularization and you yes. select one point. Normally, this is a renal angle, sir. Nobody right. will be there. This is the 12th rib tip. Generally, right. people will stick somewhere here to puncture the lower calyx, depending on the RGP, sir. Correct. Uh, so, when you go here, they will use approximately 40 to 40, uh, 35 right. to 40 degree angle to go to the lower calyx uh, normally. Correct. Uh, after that, uh, they will shift the CM. So, Correct. in your experience, uh, the CM position, 30 degree, lot of the urologists have seen. 30 degrees shifting towards the surgeon, they practice. Yes. yes. Shifting towards the surgeon and going out. Correct. And, uh, uh, and some people, very few people in prone PCL, they will shift uh, uh, head end and uh, foot end. Yes. yes. Uh, I don't think uh, in any of the RGP, 30 degree shifting towards surgeon will not be able to do like that. It will not be there, no, sir. In all correct. the cases, this will help. Correct, correct, correct. So in that relevance, I am asking a question. Commonly, bullseye, whenever I post something in Facebook, will you do triangulation on bullseye? I have seen in India, lot of people go for bullseye. They say that bullseye is the easiest method and guarantee you will reach. Correct. But before I tried, somewhere, first I will put in 30 degree, uh, some and, uh, 0 degree, 30 degree, first I will put 30 degree and I will, I will make a bullseye like this. And right. If I start puncturing, exactly it will be above the rib. Right. Then what should we do, sir? Or it may sometimes go above the rib also. Right. So especially uh, it goes more medial, Correct. more superposter. Right. It goes more medial and it cannot right. be pulled. For example, this is 11th rib. By chance it comes here on the 11th yes. rib. I can't go yes. here, I can't go here. It will be too medial like here. Correct. In normal triangulation, we will go somewhere enter here. We are comfortable yes. here. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to enter like this here, we are little afraid. Correct. So, how do you address especially yeah. middle calyx and superior calyx? Yes. Not going supracostal medial. We always have fear that major will be injured. So okay. So I think this is the major thing which one has to understand. And this is actually a starting point of the complications. If you, if you see uh, whichever method you adopt, whether it is a bullseye, whether it is a triangulation, whether you uh, move the CM this way or that way, eventually your objective is to get the access to the pelvic system in an appropriate way. 
Now that appropriate way can be by anything, whether it is a bullseye or whether it is ultrasound guided, whether it is a triangulation, whatever method, whatever name you give. Now bullseye, what happens is that it is all, it all depends on training. If you are in your tenure, in your uh, career of uh, training residency, if the seniors are doing bullseye, eventually you will become expert in bullseye and you will, uh, you will like that to continue. All our residents now, 110 residents, all our residents who have been trained and passed out from here, they are so used to this triangulation and posterior axillary line puncture that none of them, even if you tell them that you do bullseye this, they will say, no, no, I don't understand. I, I, I will, I'm comfortable doing this. So it is a part of training. That is one. But eventually it boils down to lesser complications by whatever method. So what you have to do, the problem of bullseye when, when we have tried and uh, doing bullseye, is that first you have to make the CM 30 degree towards you and find out the, the exact pin pinpoint where exactly the location is. Now so, that location actually varies yes, on the sir. abdomen. That is where the problem lies. And as you rightly said, that location sometimes goes to the 11th rib, sometimes it goes to medial side, sometimes it goes to that. And therefore there is a problem. Whereas in triangulation, uh, posterior axillary puncture, what happens? Your entry point on the skin surface is fixed. Yes, sir. Now, as you know, the uh, the calyx is a round calyx. Now, yes. from the periphery, periphery, whether you go from this angle or that angle, it is it is immaterial. Yes. And therefore, with triangulation, what happens is that your posterior axillary line is fixed. Now, yes. you make an appropriate angle in such a way that you are entering the posterior uh, posterior calyx. Yes, so, sir. So benefit of the of this particular method is that your uh, entry point of this on the skin is fixed, and yes, your entry point of the kidney can be variable depending on the calyx. So that is the big benefit. Okay. Secondly, secondly, what happens is that uh, when you make a bullseye technique and when you go medial, because your calyx is angulated in such a way that you have to go medial, so, and if it is a supracostal. Then yes, you, are lander, you are landing up with the problem. Yes, sir. Because pleural reflection is yes, going to touch the uh, 12th rib uh, on the medial side. Whereas yes, as you go laterally, the pleural reflection is on the 12th. It goes away from 12th and it goes away from the 11th rib also. Yes, so sir. posterior axillary line, if you are taking, then even for the supra 12 puncture, you don't have to even bother about it. Yes, you, sir, yes. Just, you just neglect that you are supracostal and you do puncture as it is. Yes, now, sir. the important understanding is that uh, when uh, uh, the kidney lie in the body is such and calysis orientation in the body is such that sir. in a prone position like this, if the yes, if you are seeing in the AP view, the uh, lower calyx has anterior and posterior group. Yes, sir. Whereas in upper calyx, it is not anterior posterior, it is a lateral medial. Yes, sir. That is how the kidney is oriented in the body. Yes, and sir. Therefore, when you go to upper calyx, there is nothing like uh, 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 posterior calyx and the anterior calyx. It's a lateral and medial. And yes, therefore, sir. supracostal puncture, you always hope for the and aim for the lateral uh, calyx puncture. From lateral, you will always go to medial uh, thing. So that yes, is why in upper calyx puncture, why this triangulation and supracostal and posterior axillary is better because you are targeting only lat lateral uh, oriented calyx in the upper calyx and from there you enter it. So, so you are plural and this is avoided. Should, there should be some flexibility when a bullseye point is in a very awkward point. Yes. You should Absolutely adjust true. and come back to triangulation a little bit and correct. then mix both and go. Correct, correct, correct. Correct. Okay. Sir, next important question, same thing. As you said, if if, uh, if this is the 12th rib, if this is the 11th rib, yes. if the patient is taking deep inspiration, yes. the pura comes more down medially, yes. the pura comes less more down laterally, yes. the kidney also moves a little bit, right. everybody moves down, right. don't they think that you can go subcoastal? Right. If uh, 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 during expiration, Everything moves out so that you have to go up. Right. So if you keep in deep inspiration a little bit, right. puncturing, after that kidney will not go that much high because Correct. it will fix it. Correct. That is what they say. 
what Correct. what do you, what do you say sir this no i will i will tell there. you this yes, is sir. this is also uh, uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about it yes sir and uh, too much thinking on this actually is the beginning of complications yeah and and we have to actually understand one thing is certain that plural reflection in the body is a fix plura yes. never comes down or up or something plura is a fixed structure which is attached and reflected at a point which is a fixed point now okay. it is only lung which comes down and up the plura remains where it is now uh, in the deep inspiration the lower border of the lung touches the lower end of the plura and okay. in the, and the deep uh, expiration the lung will go up and there will be a gap between plural reflection and the and the and the lung okay. so it is a very misconception that plura will come down and will go up plura remains where it is it is only lung which will come down and go up so that is one one uh, misconception which should be there in my everybody's mind now having okay. said that the kidney also moves Yes. It moves because when there is a, a deep inspiration, there is a pressure on the diaphragm, yes. and that and the kidney moves. All uh, all retroperitoneal structures. We also have a sign that it moves with the respiration or not. In first MBBS and this, we were taught that any structure which is there in the uh, peritoneum, retroperitoneal, and this, it will move with respiration simply because the diaphragm uh, is there is a flexibility, and yes, uh, the pressure remains. Pressure comes on the diaphragm. and yes, the kidney goes down yes sir uh, having said that it is only a uh, a uh, uh, wishful thinking that you tell patient to take deep breath the kidney comes down and you puncture it properly that yes. should not be done because what happens is that okay kidney comes down you have made a puncture but kidney is not going to remain there for uh, all all along it is going to uh, up so eventually what yes. happens is that your entry point is there and your entry point on the kidney is at uh, at point where deep inspiration now kidney is gone up so actually what happens is that this creates a zigzag track you are going into entry into the skin up to the retroperitoneal up to the kidney surface and from there kidney moves up and this zigzag track actually is a beginning of problem because okay. then it is going to create problem in your dilatation this is going to create problem in your subsequent nephroscopy it is going to create problem in your everything so zigzag track first principle in pcnl is to avoid the zigzag track and therefore therefore even when you are puncturing when you are puncturing you go in one go don't go like this wait for some time go this way go that way go this way go that way that is not right because then you are creating multiple zigzags yes sir So one go, you have to put a, a clear cut uh, to towards calyx. Aim and go fast. Correct. Absolutely true. And that yes, will take care of your uh, half sir. of the complications. Yes, sir. Sir, in prone PCNL, do you have a lateral limit where you go? For example, too much lateral calyx is there. You tried medially, it did not happen. It did not move. How? There is a chance of uh, colonic injury in prone also. Forget about the literature, but if you go more, for example, here column will be there. Here it will not be definitely there. Yeah. So the border line is here. Anybody can visualize. So Correct. If you try to stay this side in between these, you will not get. Correct. Draping, draping. If it is uh, not identifying all the structures, suddenly you may go sometimes yeah. here and go more laterally. Correct. Correct. Uh, then we may get into problem. So, Correct. So uh, what is the what is the is there any bulge you see or Twelfth trip, lateral. You should not go. What is the landmark? Because in front. No oh, landmark, landmark. Landmark is your is your axillary line, posterior axillary line. So so when you are this marking to dripping, is. yeah. So you see the axilla, see the posterior axillary line, and and in that yes. uh, you make a make a line. Now as far as possible, don't try to go uh, lateral to posterior axillary line, because then. See okay. what happens is that posterior axillary line corresponds to the white line when we see from laparoscopy. Yeah. We see that white line. Yes, that sir. outside corresponds to posterior axillary line. So all the okay. punctures which are there will go. So if you go below that, then it may go through peritoneum or through something. And especially if you don't put a bolster, if there is a bulge, then along the white line there is a lateral bulge. Now that may cause some some damage. 
So do you think that, uh, uh, again, a basic question, a uh, lot of people in periphery do under spinal, uh, uh, respiratory movement, patient positioning, patient talking, uh, sometimes uh, all this, some people feel uncomfortable. Some people say that we have never done in GA. It is all individual preference, I understand. Do you think that any any certain, for example, staggered when you are doing, it may take more, more than one and a half hour, two hours time. Is it better to have, because again, putting into GA is difficult. Uh, yes. Do you think that uh, at least in difficult cases, uh, GA is better like that? No, actually, as you rightly said, it is a personal preference. But uh, yes, you see now sensor cane and other thing, what they give last for two hours. But uh, what happens, uh, those who are doing regularly under spinal, uh, what I have discussed with them and what their opinion is that if it is taking too much time, we stage the procedure. There is no problem. But at the same time, uh, the under anesthesia, if everything is fine, you still can continue because ultimately, when you give spinal anesthesia, there is a time limit. After that, the anesthesia will wear away and the patient will start uh, moving and uh, he will become uncomfortable. Also, even if you keep the patient under prolonged uh, time uh, for one and a half hours, two hours under spinal anesthesia, even if spinal is acting, sometimes the patients uh, become uncomfortable because uh, they are under... Uh, stress and this and they they start moving upper body that also creates problem but having said that if you have if you have mastered the technique under spinal anesthesia there is no problem it is not okay. hazardous or anything all anesthesia is safe there is no problem okay. so now i will take out my technician we will go to the technical aspects i will use the okay. board so that i have not any powerpoint presentation one of the question asked by the thank you sridhar is my one of senior technician accepted to lie down thank you okay. very much and uh, sir uh, in CT, uh, one of the axial cut, if it is like this, this is anterior, this is posterior, whatever it may be. Right, right, right. Uh, if they are asking, naturally, kidney is rotated anteriorly like this. Uh, colon, colon, if it is like this, very safe, you, can, you have all this margin to puncture. Right. Colon is here, it's half line above, we feel comfortable because it will be sticking on to this 90 degrees. Yeah. And probably this area. Correct. You are asking a question, up to what, like, this is high lump. Up to if the if the colon is coming behind hilum, will you be try to be more uh, medial in your puncture? What yeah. is your uh, danger sign in CT axial cut for colon, sir? No, again CT scan. As you said that if it is you have to see the judgment as how much is the window you have. This window, uh, sir. This yeah, window. this window. How much is that window you have? And once you see that there are certain cases which you know that uh, colon actually has come behind the kidney. So you know very clearly that these are all risky cases. But how much window you have, that you can see on the CT scan and that much idea you have. Very important point that having said that, the CT picture, what you are seeing on the imaging and what actually you are uh, seeing in the prone position under fluoroscopy table, the anatomy is going to change a little bit. Yes, The colon yes, and bulging and all this is not going to remain same as what you have seen on the CT scan. So yes, ultimately, you have to see on fluoroscopy and yeah. the most important landmark is when you are puncturing the kidney. In the enthusiasm of uh, getting the access to the kidney, we always forget the bowel gas. And I have presented this many times that retrospectively, once you call, injure the colon, retrospectively, you go back and see the recording. You sure. see that there was clear indication that yeah. bowel is moving. So okay. ultimately, whatever window you have, when you make a puncture, if there is a colonic gas which is moving along with your needle, withdraw it and go from different angle and, uh, and this will definitely prevent the complication. Okay. Now, if you forget this uh, aspect, because we don't pay attention to the colonic gas, our objective and our is like Arjuna, where your calyx is the only thing which you see, rest yeah. of the things you don't see, yes. then that creates a problem. Okay. So you should have an idea of the colon when your puncturing is also important, yes. not only the CT image. Yes. On table live is very important for the surgeon. Keep as I am the. So my next question, when you are doing dilatation, for example, if you have the calyx and your densely impacted stone is there in the interior yes. calyx. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Two problems uh, which I personally had a lot of problems, especially with the metal dilator is the guidewire goes and somewhere coils here or here. If you are dilating, if this guide wire slips like this here, or at the 
initially uh, the first dilatation is okay needle but when you are doing with the smallest dilated alkane rod here and here the guide wire slips and that is a, a little, very big problem then we try to pull the guide wire the kink part back by the time this guide wire comes out starting coming out, out. Okay. correct so how either stuff for a sheet one one point or as you said some zigzag movement if you have done the moment the needle is taken out this zigzag movement will be there and you cannot dilate easily that so correct. how to prevent this yeah so to prevent that as there are two uh, multiple aspects and yes. this is a very common problem when we have our residents we will see that all the residents eventually will end up this problem now there so, are multiple ways to prevent this complication and problem first and foremost is that if you are lucky that wire is going inside then first and foremost we tell resident is that you coil up as much wire as inside possible if it is going in the kidney let it go it will even if you have to pull it out no problem okay if it is goes in upper calyx push as much as possible yes. so that you have always have a safety margin to pull the wire and still you are in the system that is one okay. second thing is that this problem we used to face almost uh, uh, every third or fourth case when we were using this ptf j tip wire now okay. with the advent of this uh, terimo glide wire these are all kink resistant wire it doesn't get kinked and therefore with the invention of a glide wire the problem has actually uh, resolved Yes, now sir. the because but that problem has resolved but there is another problem which has started is that this uh, glide wires are very slippery sir before even you realize and before even nurse gives the second you realize that your wire is already out yes. so they are very very slippery they they uh, the assistant uh, assistant has to be so careful yes, that his uh, his uh, attention has to be on the wire all the time that is yes. one second problem with glide, glide wire is that you can't give any force now suppose if you have the sensor wire or the zebra wire where the only the tip is floppy and rest of the wire is a tough wire then yes, uh, you you have dilatation which is easy to do it but yes, if sir. you try to do it on the glide wire then you need little bit of a practice yes, uh, so as to pass the wire without uh, uh, the allowing wire to come out so that yes. requires technique now having said that if that wire gets kinked then what you have to do is that uh, there if there are if the kink is just uh, under the fascia then you okay. withdraw the wire and negotiate the kink outside and push the dilator okay. and once you go inside replace that wire and put a fresh wire so that this problem is uh, over if okay. the problem has occurred near the kidney yes sir and if you are not able to do anything Yes, then you have to uh, don't waste time accept that this is gone and make a fresh puncture if yes. you have made puncture properly once there is no reason why you will not do puncture again second time so yes, be confident about puncture if yes. you think that it is not this just remove it rather than spending time and eventually landing up with the same problem yes, better sir. to remove it and make a fresh puncture okay sir sir same thing i am asking after the dilatation for example entire stone is there uh when you are dilating usually it will be like this in the small dilator yes and you increase the dilator suddenly it slips out and goes here correct after entering every blood will be seen correct 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 so every this also as if it appears overlapping the yes. overlapping yes. the stone yes but when you go inside yes. even in the presence of the guide wire correct you are not seeing the stone especially too much densely guide wire somehow goes like this yeah yeah you are you are afraid to dilate and you are not able to dilate beyond the stone correct so in that case the moment you go stone should be seen if correct. it is not seen and blood is coming even if the water flow is more blood is coming for yeah. a junior coming back is safe or coming going front is safe yeah. or moving for short period of time anterior posterior and correct. see blue with the drawing the ampulla sheet is safe yeah. how to go sir whenever you okay. see lot of blood at the periphery of the stone you are almost on it but you don't see it correct i think this is also a very common problem uh, there are two things Sir. one is that you have missed the tract 
and yeah. either you have under dilated or you are over dilated in a different fashion in yes, a different sir. way so there are two uh, two things about this which will happen now over dilatation can occur and still a wire can be uh, in the in the in the place because yes. what happens is that as you rightly pointed out in the previous uh, problem is that uh, you dilate because there is no space your dilator slips by the side of the calyx it goes yes. actually to the parenchyma and along with that the wire also goes by the side of the parenchyma it is like intersusception your wire is taking a u turn curve and then yes, going sir. into the going into the kidney like that yes, and sir. you are over dilated you are gone over dilated by the side of the stone yes so sir. in that case what you have to see is that you have to watch a wire so if yes, wire sir. is in place then it is very good it is there is uh, hardly any problem Yes, if your wire is in place then whatever blood which is coming up you don't worry about it just withdraw your uh, scope little bit along with the dilator and at one point of time you will realize that uh, suddenly the wire has become straight and yeah. that is the point where you see that there is a there will so be stone in this area your field will, will be completely red because there is a lot of blood which comes in because you are in parenchyma you are yes, not sir. in the calyx the field will be red but on fluoroscopy and from your moment you know that the uh, the uh, the stone is going to be there so whatever energy source which you have you start uh, breaking either with the lithoclast or uh, washing up the uh, some clots with the forceps and other things moment yes, you see the stone your first objective don't worry about the blood blood is bound to come but your objective in a, this situation is to break the stone moment you see a slight part of the stone you break the stone create a space and somehow push your implants inside the pc system moment it it goes inside the pelvic lateral system all blood will stop and everything uh, will become clear so unless and until you create a space and uh, unless and until you break the stone the space will not be created your implants will remain inside the parenchyma and that will keep on uh, having blood uh, again and again and whatever you do that blood will never stop so don't bother about blood let there be some blood loss break the stone and push your implants properly inside that is one yes, secondly sir. suppose you have missed the wire you are yes, over dilated sir. and wire also has come out it was slightly inside and it has come out so now what to do now once you know that you have done over dilatation which you will come to know by fluoroscopy whether you are over dilated or not then with the pressure from the irrigation pressure you gradually withdraw With the when you gradually withdraw you have to keep on sucking you have to have the uh, energy system in such a way that it keeps on efficiently sucking the uh, blood which is there clots which are there and yeah. moment uh, you keep withdrawing anterior posterior also you have to see moment you see blood stop i mean uh, stay stone stop there and adopt the same way what you have done now the other thing is that you have under dilated you think yes, that sir. you have actually reached the system but you have not reached the system yeah uh, and somehow because of the stone it is not uh, dilated at all now that yes. also idea you will get on the fluoroscopy again keep on sucking the blood keep the implants wherever it is don't push the implants because if the stone is there fully filling the calyx your implants is not going to go into the calyx it will go somewhere yes. else it will create false passage in the parenchyma it will aggravate the bleeding advance only the nephroscope keep implants wherever wherever it is along with the energy source and then try to break it create a space and then put a rod put a dilate implants dilator and put the implants uh, sheath inside the pelvic lateral system yeah okay sir so my again question lot of people when uh, when the system is like this they try one puncture two puncture three puncture here after that out of desperation needle goes here and they they get uh, urine correct so if the needle is too medial at the time of withdrawing the uh, inner one uh, is it ideally should be here if a correct. very puncture means he should get water or urine from here correct 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 But more number of punctures if you are doing correct. if you come to here and get clear urine correct most of us will take chance in a If I am getting frustrated after five six punctures. Correct, correct. And it goes nicely here. Correct. We try to dilate, mm -hmm. but in other angle, if you see, it may come entirely here 
it might have entered here or it might have entered here. We don't correct. know. Correct. Correct. In that case, do you think that a small tract dilatation and get away with the stone removal is better or better with withdraw and the pass the guide back? Hmm. So what you do, suppose you are not getting the puncture at all and you have made a medial puncture or direct pelvic puncture or direct infantibular puncture. That is what in yeah. short you are asking. Yeah. That it is a pelvic puncture or uh, you have made an infantibular puncture or major uh, uh, this puncture, whether yeah. you should go ahead dilate and that or not. Yes, sir. Now, if, if you dilate and if you are not having any problem, you are lucky. But okay. if, if you continue with the dilatation of uh, that track, you may land up with the problem. So yes. what you do in that situation, you are getting clear urine. So what you do is that you put a wire. Wire will get coiled up in a proper system. You put a six number uh, dilator in that. Six number dilator is not going to cause any problem. Make sure that this dilator is properly into the pelvic elastral system. It, it is not an ideal puncture. It is a pelvic puncture. And uh, so, so water keeps on coming. Urine is very clear and six number dilators is placed. Now what you do is that from there, you inject a proper contrast. Sometimes what happens is that ureteric catheter you are injecting, but it is immediately draining out and therefore you are not able to uh, puncture it properly. It is getting washed out. There's some extravasation or something like that. Once you have multiple puncture, the whole field will become uh, uh, black and there is extravasation. Yes. Now once you make uh, this, you inject again contrast and uh, and try to puncture it again through a proper calyx. If you get a proper calyx, once your contrast is properly filled up with the PCA, with the six number dilator there, then you put a wire and dilate that and forget about uh, the original puncture. Yeah. Uh, having so said that, the suppose the kidney, kidney is uh, dilated. If Sir. there are calyces which are dilated, Sir. then what happens is that the complications which we discussed about the infundibular puncture and pelvic puncture are minimized. Sir. Why? Because as dilatation increases, Sir. the major and uh, minor infundibular uh, infundibuli uh, gets fused. They yes, become sir. subtle structure. If you have a usually dilated system, there is nothing like long calysis and desert. They all become single one bag. Okay. So if your dilatation is excessive, then even if you make it direct puncture or desert, it does not matter. It is not going to cause major problem. Yeah. Only thing is that your hold on the parenchyma will be much less. So yeah. that you have to be careful. Your implants repeatedly may come out of the system. And yes. you may not have that much hold on the, the when you are breaking the stone. So that precaution you have to take. Otherwise, it will start the cascade of another complications. Sir, one more question. If the, if the system is not a, a classical system, and if it is like this, only two calices are present, and if yeah. the stone is present here, yeah. and this is already a 11th rib, and this is a 12th rib, this is a 10th right. rib, Correct, if you correct, really correct. want to go like this idea, it will go above the 11th rib. Can we go like this a little bit below the 11th rib and get away with the system? Yeah, so so upper calyx where it is situated uh, between 12th and 11th rib. So what you are discussing is that situation where you are forced to do PCNL. Nowadays, we always will do RIRS in the RIR, situation. RIR. Yes. But, but if you are forced to do a PCNL in a stone, which is in the compact periphery of the upper calyx, which is above the 12th rib, between 11th and 12th rib, how the puncture should be made. Now, we will not go the original diagram, original this uh, like that. We will not go like that because it will be too much of uh, the angle and we may come, uh, we may go above uh, supra 11, which is, which is very hazardous. Too much of yes. above the rib is hazardous. So there is there is always a place to go in the direction which you have shown uh, below between the 11th and 12th rib in that angle. Make sure that the wire goes across properly into the ureter and kidney actually uh, has a, a lot of play. Once you dilate, never dilate the upper calyx with too much of over dilatation. Don't use you know com compact calyx like this. Your objective is only to do mini PCNL. You never mm -hmm. do a large size 24 and 28 size PCNL because it is bound to have problem. You know, okay. compact calyx, thick parenchyma, only mini PCNL up to 15 seed size. And once you do that, you can break the stone 
and kidney has a lot of flexibility sure. if it is a kidney which is uh, like this thick kidney there is a lot of flexibility moment you put your uh, this inside the kidney actually can come down and you can yes. see that you will actually go up to the pelvis from yes. even if it is angle it yes. will appear that it is hazardous taking a u turn but actually the kidney goes down and it becomes quite straight yes sir sir next question sir when you have punctured the middle calyx middle calyx here yes and, uh, uh, suddenly guide wire skip after certain time this all become uh, contrast or if you have injected contrast uh, inadvertently and everything especially dark contrast is injected yeah. this part of the calyx and stone is here right right if right if it is not here better to leave this or go to other place or you can try there only no if there is a too much of extravasation in a particular calyx then it is yes, not appropriate go to a calyx which is uh, <coughs> which is a virgin yes and sir. and from that you get it uh, don't unnecessarily fiddle with the uh, calyx which is already extravasated you will not be yes, able sir. to do it properly yes sir and so uh, to go from the, the virgin the calyx normally contrast uh, thick contrast should be injected or thin contrast should be injected sir? very light in fact we dilute the contrast because when you are puncturing your objective of injecting contrast is to just see whether you are in a proper cup of the calyx or not yes. so for that you don't have to go in fact it should be diluted otherwise this is a problem which you will face yes sir many times even from the ureteric catheter when you are injecting contrast yes, and sir. especially if the system is compact then little bit of a contrast also will cause extravasation before even you puncture you see that there is extravasation which has happened because yes. ureteric catheter also if you inject highly concentrated uh, contrast under the yes. force it is bound to rupture the calyces fornices and it will cause extravasation so yes. always dilute contrast and very very uh, gentle uh, injection yes sir the next question when you are doing the surgery you have stone here you have gone inside you are breaking the stone everything is periphery only is a big stone it will take around half an hour but the outflow is always red you are worried uh, around 22 or 18 you have kept pan plush right you are breaking but vision is 50 50% right and uh, big stone you are seeing the stone but uh, bucket color slightly outflow cover with your hand if you see it is slightly red there right 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 what to do sir in that situation so there are two possibilities one Sir. is that um, uh, you are uh, you are seeing the uh, uh, stone but your uh, ampulla sheath or your nephroscope sheath may be partially in and partially out so yes, you see on fluoroscopy create a space and try to push it push the ampulla uh, still inside and okay. see whether it clears up or not okay. suppose your system is proper you are you are inside the system but still it is dark so that means that there might be some injury to the, yes. the significant vessel while dilating if it is continuously significant red then there is no ego issue just stage it and then uh, maybe after 48 hours once it clears up you do it there is no logic in because in those cases will you put nephrostomy sir 100% you have to pick a big size nephrostomy as much as possible and give a compression for 5 minutes from outside because okay. these are all tract bleeding yes and and it is possible that when you are dilating some significant vessel um, is injured and therefore that is continuously causing bleeding inside and outside yes, so sir. that is where the problem comes in and if you continue stone is seen you are breaking every time you have to make the movement seen and out but in a yes. short span significant amount of blood will go away before even you realize so yes, there is no point the if the dark red outflow is there you have to be very very cautious maybe 5 10 minutes you can continue but if it is not stopping better to stage the procedure no harm in staging no ego issue okay sir sir uh, when you are doing uh, the ampullas removal of the stone sometimes a very big stone when you are removing if the assistant is not very careful entire ampulla comes out and it is uh, still half of the stone is here yeah ampulla comes out total outside Correct. Correct. So correct. immediately, what we should do, sir? So immediately, what you do is that uh, uh, you take a uh, take a rod, guide rod, sir. Let let amplitudes be there itself because it has come out. 
Yes, sir. It is not in the system. But no. you are all the time in the system properly. You are breaking half the stone yes. is broken up. So yes. there is a hole which is there. And it is just a fresh, uh, freshly it has come out. So, in the rod, in the same direction under fluoroscopy control, uh, try to put a rod. See, wire will not go because glide wire will uh, some coil up somewhere. But rod will definitely go. Okay. Don't push the rod, but gently... Sir, should we push the rod or should we go with small nephroscope? Immediately, immediately. No, immediately better to push a rod because it okay. was there inside. Because even nephroscopy also, uh, your nephroscopy is already there. But moment amplots comes out, the field will be red and then you have to give pressure, irrigation pressure and this and that. But rod will definitely sip in. If your axis is proper, if your angle is proper and you know it, then a rod will definitely go inside. Once rod goes inside, then over that again, you can replace the dilator. Suppose the rod doesn't go inside. Then uh, you take a small scope uh, or a same scope and make a very pressure irrigation for transient uh, time see whether something opens up or not. And if something opens up, there you keep a wire ready and push the wire inside. Their rod is of no use. Then you push a wire because yeah. transiently when you give pressure, some amount of uh, blood will get cleared up. Your uh, uh, The whole track was already there. Once it opens up, uh, some part of the irrigation pressure is going to go into the system. Along with that, wire will go inside the system. Okay. Then you do that. Sir, last uh, four or five questions. Uh, you have done supracostal puncture. You have done a lot of time all this. Anesthetist did not say anything, but nephrostogram shows a curved line like this, mm. indicating that some amount of pleural fluid has gone. Correct. Normally, nephrostogram is not done, but Correct. by chance on the table you have. There are two questions I am asking. On the table you have done nephrostogram. Uh, curvature uh, die in the like, direction of the pleura is there one or postoperatively chest x-ray has shown a uh, pleural fluid of uh, around 250 ml. In yeah. both cases, if the patient is asymptomatic, what to do, sir? So, if the patient is asymptomatic, there is no pain, there is nothing, no you can pain. Answer, there is no problem. Pleural fluid means what? It is not going to be clear fluid. It is always hemothorax, which is, okay. which is usually there. There is always some amount of blood. Yeah. And therefore, if there is any doubt that there is a problem with the uh, respiration, if there is a, you put an ICD. ICD I can be higher up. There is no problem. ICD is very easy to put in. Anywhere you can put in, there is no problem. You did not okay. go from the same place. So, ICD so can the, be definitely... For the 53 mid line, you can put. Yeah, put, put uh, like any ICD, put, uh, you put. Yeah, you we, put all all in, uh, we all have done in MBBS uh, casualty. Same yes. way we put. Same way you put ICD. However, yes. if you see the post-op X-ray and there is a little bit of a blunting of the, uh, the same, some amount of pleural effusion is there, hemothorax is there, patient is asymptomatic, oxygen is proper, is breathing properly, observe. It is going to seal away. It is not that it is going to create any problem or anything. It is eventually going to seal away. If there is no symptoms, you observe. Any symptoms, you can always put ICD. There is no problem. Sir, similar way, if uh, uh, on table, on table at the end of the surgery, colon is injured or not. If you don't do nephrostogram, it is difficult. Yes. Will you ever do nephrostogram when you have done clear surgery? First question, sir. No need. No need. No if need. you are in the postoperative, that means you miss the colonic injury. Yes. On, on, on table. Or yes. do you come out uh, while seeing the structures? That also we don't do. We just come out like that. Yeah, we just come out like that. Uh, in that case, if the postoperative day two, if the bigger matter comes, sir, this is a big subject. I am not going into the detail. Yeah. If the if the wound shows immediately fecal matter and patient does not have any symptoms, naturally juniors will be very much afraid. Uh, sometimes without having knowledge, they may open also. Yeah. So, what is your message if such complication is noticed, patient asymptomatic? Yeah. So there are multiple things. Sometimes uh, if you have done a uh, tubeless PCNL Sir. and uh, and wound is uh, showing the fecal matter, Sir. then uh, most of the times these are all uh, retroperitoneal uh, structures, the colonic yes, uh, structures. So if the general abdomen is all right, there is no signs of peritonitis, there is no distension, there is Sir. nothing like that. Then uh, there is no need to panic. All these uh, things give higher antibiotics. 
give proper uh, dressing, irrigation, and this uh, buyer antibiotic. And eventually, all these colonies injuries eventually will stop. So you have to keep a watch only on the uh, generalized uh, peritonitis signs are present. So conservative management uh, with the post-operative CT is highly advisable instead of suddenly opening the abdomen. No opening at all. Almost no 80, at all. 90 percent of the times, no opening is required. No opening. Everything is required. will open. Uh, will uh, close only if uh, the fecal. If your puncture is a transperitoneal, and if there is a fecal spillage in the peritoneal cavity. And if there is a peritonitis, then those are the cases. But these are not even 5%. Most of the uh, injuries, colonic injuries, if you see the literature and the personal experiences of so many people, majority of the times they heal by themselves. There is no problem. If there is any, if there is a, a nephrostomy which is kept, then and if the fecal matter is coming out, then what are the possibilities that you are uh, your uh, uh, pelvic collateral system is proper, there are no signs of peritonitis, then you keep injecting contrast and bring uh, this nephrostomy out till such time that contrast is visualizing the colon. Yes. So instead of a, a nephrostomy, you make a, a colostomy or something, tube colostomy. colostomy. To keep it here in the, by the side of the colon. Yeah. So, so you isolate the, the system. Slowly withdraw daily. Yeah, slowly, slowly not daily. You can it, will, Islam, it will heal. It will create a tract, and once the tract is tract. formed, there is no problem. Just take care of the wound uh, because okay. that excoriation takes place because of the fecal matter. Skin yes. reaction takes place, and everything will heal. There is no problem. The last two questions. Yeah. Last but one question is: If the postoperative immediate period you are getting hematuria after uh, finishing the case, reasonably good. You have not encountered major bleeding. But you have dilated up to 20 French, you have removed the stone. Uh, first day was okay, clamped. Second day, mild immaturia to the extent of uh, irrigation. Mm. And hemoglobin was pre up around 13, 14, and it has come to 10. Mm. Slightly, surgeon will be worried on the third day if the bleeding is not clear and some patient is not discharged. From then, from then if you have fear, uh, what, what are the uh, very, very practical guides? For example, especially if the angio is not in city, and the angio facility is three to four hours away. Mm. What should be in the surgeon's mind? Definitely will be under stress, especially Correct. if the hemoglobin goes below 10 from 13, 14 male Correct. or female. We will be little Correct. worried. So what is your guide at that point of time? Third day. So at that, that point of time, uh, first and foremost is that you first uh, give a higher antibiotic whenever there is a uh, hematuria. Because one aspect is always there that preoperatively the patient may have some infection. And whenever there is an infection and when you do this, the bleeding occurs and the uh, infection uh, can precipitate more bleeding, uh, more erosion, more sloughing of uh, the papillae, calysis and this. So higher antibiotic is absolutely mandatory. They don't allow the bladder to get uh, distended with clot retention. So always give irrigation. Now, the question is that whether nephrostomy is clamped or not and whether there is any perinephric hematoma is present or not. If there is no perinephric hematoma, if there are no local signs, it is only going uh, down as a hematuria and requiring irrigation and uh, drop in hemoglobin. Then the other possibility is that if three, four days are already over, then one thing is that you gradually, uh, the tract is formed, withdraw the nephrostomy. Sometimes this nephrostomy itself sometimes irritates and it keeps on uh, some bleeding which occurs. Withdraw nephrostomy, keep a tight pressure bandage, uh, keep a pressure for some time, continue irrigation and see what happens or not. If all these measures, uh, they fail, then uh, you have no option but to do angiography, wherever mm -hmm. the facility is there. But majority of the times, if the hemodynamic uh, instability is not there, and uh, the clot retention has not occurred, then majority of the times uh, it is, these are all uh, other minor uh, causes for immaturia and yes. they should stop. They should stop. So my last question, uh, because of various reasons, if the students, lot of students are coming, that much workload is not there and PCRLs are not done in the primary unit often and consultants only will do it and the residents, they don't do it. Uh, what is the advice to them you give because you are in an institute where teaching institute for years and uh, 
by constantly watching the videos, this surgery is difficult to replicate, honestly. So should they go and join somewhere with eye volume center or should go there for observership? Is it necessary that they have to do certain number of cases first and then go to private practice? Or should they take a senior in the private practice because it's always competitive uh, and uh, help take help in the theater? Uh, and the way students, some students learn very fast, some students are always afraid, is individual learning curve will be present. Correct. What is the message you wanted to give for no, those? I, this question is extremely relevant and this problem and this scenario we are going to see more and more in the coming years, simply because the uh, the centers which are high, supposedly high volume PCN centers, with the advent of uh, TFL and disposable, half of the cases are getting converted to RIRS. Yes, and therefore, with number of seats increasing, number of PCNL going down, eventually the crisis is going to be uh, more and more. And it may so happen that they may finish three years of their tenure, but still they are not confident of uh, doing PCNL uh, independently. And then what happens, this is exactly what is happening in America, that they finish their tenure, either they have not, forget they are doing independently and confidently, they have seen few, forget about doing, they may have done one or two, and they have seen only few, majority of the things are, uh, things are RIRS and other things, and eventually they become diffident and they continue to do any case, whatever type, stagon and this, that, they continue to with stage RIRS and this and that. And it's that is Because that is not correct. Same thing has happened with laparoscopy. Eventually it has become robotic and laparoscopy is dead in America simply because the newer people have no exposure. The old people who had exposure, who were doing regularly are retired. They are not teaching the, there are no teachers and therefore there are, there is no way to learn. Yes, so sir. this is what happens that good procedures also eventually die down simply because it is difficult to learn. The way to overcome this problem is that not only keep seeing video, because however video you see, however live see, unless and until you are actually doing it, you yes, are sir. not going to be confident. Because you may see 100 times, you may be having perfect theory, but actually when you are doing, uh, things are completely different. Yes, sir. Other way to overcome is the simulation program. Simulation. Now, there are many simulators which actually give a real life experience, but but these are all just a, uh, a stepping stone. Eventually, there is no shortcut for actually doing it with the teacher in the presence of your teacher, and he is actually guiding you. He is holding your hand, and he is telling you go this way, go that way. Why you are doing this? Why you are doing that? If you do five cases with the teacher uh, uh, standing beside you, I think that will give the confidence to tackle any case. Sir, quickly, three persons have asked to respect them. Yeah. Uh, question number one, if the fecal fistula, usually how many days it will take time to heal? How many days? Patient will be asking, sir, when, when it will heal, why it is coming, why it is coming? But only method is conservative. Generally, what? 10 to 12 days. The leakage? Uh, uh, Fecal fistula, how many days? It, uh, yeah, fecal fistula, days? fecal fistula, how many days? It cannot be uh, told. But yes. generally, by end of two weeks, most of the yes. fistulas, they close down. Yes, sir. Sir, is there any... So what the easiest way is to convince them that this is uh, something which has happened because of some abnormality. There is nothing to worry about it. Put a colostomy bag over it. It will come out and over a period of time, it will... Only problem what they face is that when feces come out, the skin, the feces is very strong a reactor. It has a lot of acidic and a thing. The skin completely gets uh, excoriated. Yes, sir, and yes, it becomes a red and big hole. It becomes big hole. So that yes. problem should be prevented. Sir, uh, uh, one more question is, Prashamurthy uh, is, is a practical question. He said that when the bleeding is not stopping, not stopping. Will you ever dare to open and suture this kidney? I, I think no. uh, it's daring. Anjo, if not available, uh, what should we do, he is asking. See, going and opening uh, closure is uh, easier to say, but it is difficult. It is if you go in like that, and if there is hematoma, you may end up with nephrectomy. So, yes. most of the times, the conservative treatment will, uh, will help. Uh, there is no point in opening and taking stitches and this, that. Uh, all such attempts are not guaranteed, and you may uh, end up in losing the kidney. So, Saundari has asked... Uh, 
the police catheter, if it is there, if you wanted to go again inside, if the guide wire recently we had this problem, if the guide wire doesn't go uh, for re entry, uh, normally tip should be cut if you are planning for re entry. We have not cut uh, and we are the guide wire is uh, struck at the police catheter. You can't do anything, you have to take out and immediately go. You may lose the track. Any, any clues? Uh? No, then go by the side of it. By the side of the police? By the side of Foley, if you uh, want to go afterwards, you are not uh, cut the tip. Then what you do is that by the side of it, you pass a small dilator which is parallel to the this, and from okay. there because it is a tract, it is not yeah, snugly yeah. fitting tract. Yeah, it yeah. is. A, it's a tract which is which is there, the and, space uh, there. and you pass a wire by the side. Yeah, sir. If Y branching is there, Y branching in calices, for example, if it is a uh, like this, very narrow. During dilatation, you should stay back here, or you can go up to here. No, uh, it, it, uh, better to stay in the calyx only. Don't overcross only. because not you can, if it's tube, you can pass dilated. it. Yeah, there's no need to dilate. Once there you put your sheath up to the calyx, scope you can pass anywhere. There is no problem. Sir, uh, I think we have done around one hour, so this is not. Uh, uh, this is a normal time we do. Thank you very much, sir. You have always been with us. And a uh, lot of learning from you for the period. Now, I think uh, generations are learning and hope this is will be useful. Uh, I planned randomly so that these are questions repeatedly done, but uh, I got yeah. in a dialogue way. If you do, they'll remember better. These are a lot of the juniors uh, are watching today. Uh, a lot of attendance, more than 400 uh, people have attended the program. Good, good. Thank you very much, sir, being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really feel happy that you are conducting such a nice educational activities. And it is immensely benefited uh, to the uh, people at large. So thank, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, all the audience, uh, uh, for uh, uh, joining so many people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.